Hi there YouTube and welcome to part 2 of Mac Image Deployment. I expect that you now have all your files and all your stuff ready for the deployment itself. You have downloaded Mac OS Sierra, you have prepared a folder with all the applications you need to deploy, you have created the custom packages you need and you have assembled the license files. Good. Now let's start. We're going to multitask a little bit in this video so keep up. We're going to start by building the image, since that's one of the tasks that will take a little while. So we'll launch the application AutoDMG. And it'll just take a few seconds to load here. There we go. The application window is really, really simple. And from here, everything is easy. Go to the File menu and choose Select Installer. It'll point you to your Applications folder, where you'll locate the Install Mac OS Sierra. Click Open. It'll then examine the uh, downloaded uh, version you have, and it'll then also find any updates that you can download. I've already downloaded the only update it found, and you just do so by clicking download. That means iTunes version 12.5.4 will be included as the update in this package. In the uh, windows, or, or in the area down here called additional software, that's where you put in all the software and all the packages you want to deploy. So all you do is just open up the Applications folder you prepared, select all the files, and drag them in. There you go. It'll then add all the software. Application files will just be copied into the Applications folder when you deploy the Mac, and package files will be installed, so it'll actually simulate the installation, and that means your Mac can get a little funny, but we'll get to that a little bit later. I'm going to move TeamViewer to the top here, so it'll go through that one first. Uh, because that's the one that'll act funny on this uh, particular set of installations. Also, I'm going to add my custom packages to the set. So I'm going to add the application, uh, the uh, installation that I created for the custom desktop pictures, and I'm going to go in and add the license files installation. Just, and for some reason, I always tend to put these at the bottom. I don't know why. Anyway, it's not important. Good. That's basically all you need to do to build an image. So you click Build, and then it asks you where you want to save it. I'm going to choose my Portable Mac Deployment Project folder and the folder I created called Image. And then I'm going to call this Portable Mac Deployment or Portable Mac Image Mac OS Sierra. There we go. I could start with versioning, numbering, and all kind of stuff, but I'm just going to create this for my Portable Macs. So I'm just going to hit Save, and there you go. It's now preparing, and it'll just in a few seconds, there we go. Ask for the password for your system. So just type the password for your Mac, and then you are ready, and then the application will go. You can see that it's now creating the disk image, and a lot of messages will start here. It's now installing OS uh, install.m.pkg. What it's basically going through now is it's simulating a Mac installation in an image file. So your Mac can get a little hot if it's uh, not having a powerful processor. And if you have a regular old-fashioned hard drive, this will take a moment. Anyway, while that's running, let's create the Rescue USB thumb drive. Uh, you need to prepare the USB thumb drive, so make sure you find one that's empty. Or at least make a backup of everything you have on it. Then open up Disk Utility, and you can open that from Spotlight. In the list on the left here, you'll find all the connected images to your Mac and all the hard drives and all that stuff. And I have a WD, or a Western Digital, external hard drive connected to my Mac. Um, I have already created a partition on this one called Untitled. That's what I'm going to use later. But if this is your USB thumb drive, make sure to click the top level here, where you can see the arrow pointing down. Then you choose, I think it's called Format on English, I'm not quite sure. In here, you name it Untitled, and that's very important you do so. That's not random. You need to name it Untitled. Then in the format list, make sure you choose Mac OS Journaled. And in the scheme down here, or plan, I'm not quite sure what it is in English, make sure you choose GUID Partition. And then click Delete, or Restore, or Format, or whatever it's saying. Just click that button, and it'll go through the cleaning process. I've already done so and created a partition here called Untitled. I'm not going to erase my hard drive here. So once you have a drive called Untitled, you can start creating your rescue drive. If you click, uh, take a peek in the description, uh, and I'm just going to open that up here, there will be a command in the description here, a command for the terminal. 
And all you simply just do is copy this command, just command C to copy it, and then you open up the application called Terminal. There we go. Terminal is a command line utility on the Mac, and basically what we're going to do here, I'm just going to paste the command, is we're going to tell the application install Mac OS Sierra to create install media, and we're going to create it on the volume called Untitled. And that's basically what this is going to do. So paste that into your terminal, hit return. It's going to ask you for your password. And as you type your password, it's not going to show any dots or stars on the screen, but it is registering your keystrokes. So just type your password, hit return. It's going to say that the volume untitled is going to be deleted. So hit Y and then hit return. And then it's going to erase the disk called untitled. And then it's going to start preparing it as a rescue drive. That means you can boot your Mac from it, and that means you will always have a bootable USB thumb drive where you can go in and erase the Mac's hard drive and deploy your image. Now, at this point, everything is just going to have to work. And from here, depending on what kind of Mac you have, it'll take about 20 minutes to an hour to complete both of these tasks. Now, once TeamViewer uh, starts making some funny things on my Mac, I'll return the uh, video. Okay, now you can see that macOS is done installing in the image and it is now starting to install the update iTunes. And it should, once it's done uh, with this set, go, uh, once it's done with this task, uh, start with the TeamViewer installation that might make my Mac act a little funny. There we go. Uh, you can see TeamViewer actually decided to pop up on my screen. So I'm just gonna close that down, but it's actually running from within the image that this is preparing. And you can now see that it's installing all the other applications that I told it to install. And it's basically just down here, copying keynote.app. And there you go. Now you can see it's installing Microsoft Office. So now it's running through the actual installation of Microsoft Office. So it's basically just tending to itself and it'll be done in about a moment. If we take a look over here in the terminal, you can also see that the installation media that we intended to create is now completed. The first task was copying the installer files to the disk, and that copy is complete. Create making the disk bootable and copying the boot files, copy complete, and done. And there are no error messages, so that means everything is done. We can type exit to close our admin session, and we can just close the window down. So now all we're waiting for is basically just for this to finish. Okay, now the build is complete. And you can see here, uh, AutoDMG has completed the build successfully. So now all we need to do is just click reveal. It'll open up the folder where our image file is now stored, and that'll be a DMG file. If you then take a look on your desktop, you'll see that your USB thumb drive has now changed its name to install Mac OS Sierra. That'll be the one that was called Untitled before and the one you created as a rescue drive. To make sure you can use your image uh, file, all you need to do is just drag it up here into your install Mac OS Sierra drive, and that'll be it. You can see in my case here, the image file is 12.2 gigabytes in size, and it'll take about six minutes to copy. While we're waiting for that, we might as well do something that we forgot before. This recipe that we just created in AutoDMG, we can actually save so we can use it at some other point later. So we're gonna go into the file menu and we're gonna choose save. And then in here, I'm gonna go to my portable Mac deployment folder. And uh, yeah, actually, why not, why not just save it in here in my image folder? and I'm just gonna name it the same as I did my image. There we go. So now I can always return to this recipe later. There we go. So when this copy is done, then we'll move over to the Mac where we are going to deploy this. Here we have the MacBook Air I'll be rolling out. Uh, the MacBook Air is currently turned off and now I'm just gonna connect the external hard drive to boot the Mac off the external hard drive, press the power button and before the chime, hit the Alt key and hold it down until you see the boot menu. So I'm just going to do that right now. And you're going to have to be a little fast here. There we go. It's going to show you all your available boot options. Your recovery hard drive may be there or may not. And since my external hard drive contains two bootable medias, uh, I'm going to have to choose the install Mac OS Sierra version that we created. From here, the Mac is going to take a few moments to load. Um, I'm using a USB 2.0 drive, so I had to cut the video a little here since it took five minutes. 
Anyway, now that I'm in macOS Utilities, I can start doing some work. Mine started up in English. If you want to change yours and it didn't ask you, you can go to the File menu and choose Change Language, by the way. From the menu, select Disk Utility and then click Continue in the lower right corner. And then it'll just take a few seconds to load. On the left side, you'll see your external device and your internal device. Your internal device is in two areas. This is the bottom level, the Macintosh hard drive. We'll need to unmount it, otherwise we may have problems erasing it in a moment. Now choose the top level of your hard drive. And then in here, you need to click Erase in the menu up top. This will make sure that the restoration, uh, sorry, the restore hard drives and stuff like that gets removed. Uh, just make sure that the scheme here is set to GUI partition map and the format is macOS extended and journaled. It'll just take a few seconds formatting the hard drive and cleaning it out completely. And then click done. Now you can click the untitled hard drive that has been created to your left. You need to unmount the drive again, otherwise the restore won't work, uh, work right. And then you click restore. And then you click the image button, and then a finder window will appear. In the list on the left, make sure to locate your USB device, in this case my Mac OS uh, Sierra volume. Choose the image file that you copied to your external device and click open. And then click restore. Once you click restore, it's going to start the restore process. And this will take from around three to five minutes, usually on a MacBook Air, depending on how much you put on it. This old USB 2.0 drive takes about 10 minutes. I'm just going to speed up the video significantly here. Other than Mac OS being installed, it's also going to create the recovery partition on the Mac. When it's done, all you have to do is click Done. And then you need to remount the drive by clicking Mount. And notice that the hard drive is now called Macintosh hard drive. Close both utilities on the red button, or on the red X if you will. Once you are prompted what you want to do to quit the macOS utilities, make sure to choose Startup Disk. Otherwise, you'll have a Mac hanging when it starts to boot. And once this list pops up, choose your Macintosh hard drive and then click Restart in the lower right corner. And then click Restart. The Mac will now restart. And the first time it starts up, it may take a little longer than usual, but it will start up just fine, don't worry. There we go. Once the computer starts up, it'll start with the regular setup dialogs that you have to deal with. So I'm just gonna go through these uh, real quickly. Select my wireless network and all those other stuff. There we go. And once you have completed the setup, the Mac is going to just prepare everything for use, just like normal, and then the Mac is ready. I haven't found a way to do this dialogue, these uh, startup dialogues yet, however. Um, now, when we open up the launch pad and we browse over to page two, you can see all the applications that I preloaded, they're now installed. Uh, Beamer, App Cleaner, Microsoft Office, Dropbox, VLC, all these things that I put in my image are now installed. And if I go to the Applications folder on this system, I can go in here and I can locate the License Files uh, folder. That was one of my custom packages to install these two files. So I have my Beamer license and my licensed accounts. And when I go into System Preferences and into Desktop and Screensaver, and then I scroll to the bottom, down here I can fall, uh, find the four custom desktop pictures that I installed into the Mac. That was also one of the custom packages that I created. And there you go. Your Mac is now fully operational with this deployment and you can just go to deploy more Macs if you wish to. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you can go and do something very creative with it and something very productive.